the topic of the hour time. And tonight, we have a very special guest here in the studio. We have Mr. Jonathan Wilson. He is the CEO and founder of Fathership Foundation. And we are really excited to have him on. First, I want to thank you for wanting to come on to the show. Absolutely. Um, to talk about your foundation, um, because it is very, very important. Um, I've done my research on the foundation as well. But I want to give you the opportunity to talk about what Fathership Foundation is really all about. So if you can let the viewers know, that would be great. Okay. Well, my name is Jonathan Wilson. I'm the executive director of the Fathership Foundation. The Fathership Foundation is a community-based 501c3. Um, it's a social services agency that focuses on male parenting and formal education because we, we believe in the transformative uh, benefits of those two things. Great. The power of those two things. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Mr. Wilson, and how, um, I guess, Fathership Foundation all come about. So um, you're from Cali, you're not actually from Philly. Yeah, so I'm from San Diego, California. I moved to the East Coast when I was 15 because of a family emergency. Okay. Um, and I moved to uh, the Delaware County, Southwest Philadelphia region. Mm -hmm. I've been in the RV, Southwest, West Philadelphia. Yep. So that whole little area, of, uh, that was my area, Pennsylvania area. Um, in about 2006, I was, um, unfortunately, I was on State Road. Mm -hmm. Up here at uh, CFCF, and definitely my job was the creek. And um, I ended up um, having some initial coordination issues and was put in the hole, which is the jail, the jail, mm -hmm. D1 rear for about like 16 days. Wow. And um, it was during that time that I came up with the concept from the Fathership Foundation. Um, for that time, I sat and thought about what I want to identify what do we all have in common in this prison mm -hmm. or in this jail, this kind of jail that keeps us here. Mm -hmm. And there was no name for it. And I was like, what is it? We all have fathers, but we don't have duty for fathers. Mm -hmm. We're not doing the right thing. Right. And I just started writing stuff down and surmising and just thinking and just brainstorming. Mm -hmm. And what I came up with was any of the agencies that just dealt with male issues mm -hmm. because of the lack of fathers. In the home, and I started thinking about how, what other effects would that have? Is this absence had? <clears throat> and it was a, uh, it was just a, it was a tearjerker. Cried a little bit, got sober, um, so started thinking soberly, thinking seriously about um, community stewardship, mm -hmm. um, um, taking uh, the time to give back and contribute as an individual mm -hmm. um, to my community and. That was what came out with the Fathership Foundation. So when it was all said and done, like when was the, what was the year that it was accepted? Well, it's crazy because I got shot. I got a job, I got shot in 2008. Mm -hmm. And that started changing my life around a little bit. I moved out to Wilmington, uh, Delaware. And then I got shot again in Wilmington mm -hmm. in 2011 when I kind of stopped the illegal stuff and parlayed it to open up a barbershop. Mm -hmm. But um, I still had the same mentality. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's pretty much what got me shot. Somebody tried to rob me. I tried to get done. Gotcha. Well, I never came to shot. So, my single moms, please don't be mad at me. But I believe that there is something that a father gives to a child, girl or boy. 100%. That is com something that you can never give them. Whoever, I feel like whoever like debates that has issues. Like that, like I, I'm his mom and his dad. No, like no, like like <laughs> uh, having a father in a child's life is, is impactful. It's very impactful, and it's key. And so, I get a little frustrated when that time comes around. It's like I play mom and dad. No, you play mom. Right. And you've done a great job with that. Right. No and that's that's not discrediting. That. No one's taking that from right. you. But it's certain things that a man can only give their child. Um, I was very fortunate to be able to have my my real father in my my life at a certain point, mm -hmm. but I was I'm even more fortunate that that my mother was able to find um, a great man in her life when my mother and my father decided to separate. Mm -hmm. Who actually helped raise me since I was you know eight years old. Mm -hmm. um, but even with that, um, even as an adult. I can look back and see the different effects that my parents not being together and being separated yeah. and not having my actual father there, um, how it has affected me in, in different um, points of my life. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why 
I always was like, ladies, ugh, single mama, get it. But you got to chill. It's something that your dad can give yeah. that your mom can never get, that a woman can give a certain uh, value that they are supposed to instill um, um, a sense of protection. Um, and that's why I wanted to ask, um, is your foundation just geared towards men? Well, actually, it is. Okay. Because in addition to all other ways to uplift the community through political engagement, mm -hmm. um, community service, uh, look at getting getting behind a candidate, mm -hmm. um, uh, advocating an issue mm -hmm. could be child poverty, could be bullying. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, I believe that one of the, the impetus for starting with the issue that there is. There was, there's not many agencies that are focused on men's issues. Yeah. And I thought that though this was the perfect thing to do yeah. because people need it. Men need to be holding men accountable. Sure. What we see, in, it's, my, it's my opinion that what we see in our communities is just what happens when women and children are left to fend for themselves. Yeah. Now, there are a lot of factors you've got to know um, mass incarceration, there's a lot of reasons for the, the dark in these communities. But that doesn't that hasn't stopped us from what we need to do. Right. We have to uplift these men. Right. Because a nation is only as strong as its male population. Mm. The women are not, we're built different. Mm. We do different things. God has placed on our shoulders something different. Mm -hmm. The responsibility as men to protect and provide. Right. And when we're not doing that, this is what happens. Right. Right. This is what happens. It's a chain reaction. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's, no a, it's a vicious circle. Just keeps it's hard to that. find something that the father doesn't. Any social problem in the African, just to say, urban community that does not correlate to the lack of the father being there. I, I agree with that. So that's why we said we'll focus on these two things male parenting mm -hmm. and formal education. Yeah. And that will give us a range of programs to create. We have three. We're trying to master those and scale those. Right. And then we'll be developing more. And like you said, like, not, I mean, education is not necessarily, you know, you know, Going into books and stuff like it's just yeah. it's just educating yourself. Like you said, what's the difference between assessment and uh, what did you say assessment and, and um, evaluation. evaluation? Just just being able to know things and, and communicate with you know your kids and your your spouse or shit whether you're together or not. Those things are, are what helps um, build a foundation, a solid foundation for children. Another reason for the foundation is that we need systems in place. Mm -hmm. We need to make systemic change in our community. If Absolutely. there is a fathership foundation, it can only be a benefit. Right. If I have an academic fathership in the whole entire school district, it can only be a benefit. Mm -hmm. So we as entrepreneurs, um, we, I talked about um, ways to uplift as a group. Mm -hmm. um, the entrepreneurs start opening up social service agencies. Mm -hmm. Stop working for these people. Because mm -hmm. what happens is, I'm not saying stop working for these people, but a lot of times, just in my experience, in social services industry, that many of the people that create the programs are not culturally competent, mm -hmm. but they're educated, have the formal education, and they're in a position to um, to make a program program go or not, mm -hmm. or to either say yay or nay. But people from the community, such as myself, you guys doing the radio thing, whatever you're doing, we need to be doing it, right. you know, to to uplift our community. Sure. So um, your <clears throat> so your courses. Um, can you just briefly go over what the, those courses are that you have again? Okay. Now it's a, it can get kind of confusing. The Fathership Foundation has three. It's a it's an agency. It's okay. not a program. It's okay. an agency. It's like um, consortium here. It's a way to help, to help consortium or NHS. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or something like that. Germantown Settlement before they fly. Something like that. Gotcha. All right. <clears throat> We provide three programs. Now you know what the programs are based on, right? Formal education, some kind of way, mm -hmm. and male parenting, some kind of way. That's that's what we don't do violence prevention, right? Indirectly, but right. That's what we do. So we have our CART program, which is a community academic reentry program. Okay. And what that is, we charge twenty five hundred a month for up to ten students. Okay. Now, those students most likely are going to be um, taking advantage of the most popular component of that program, which is the GED preparation. Okay, so those are the classes that you'll see about now in our GED program, on our CARP program, right? Not only, well, first of all, you can come to the CARP program if you got kicked out of school, if you want to need help working on your, uh, your following your FAFSA, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. All things that communities need to know their parents didn't go to college. Absolutely. You can come to the Fellowship Foundation in the project, and he'll be, Jonathan Wilson and one of the staff will be there to help you on your statement of purpose, your financial aid. Mm-hmm. Did you, are you in default from one of these um, Dawn Institutes or something, and you didn't get the job, you went right. there, now you can't go to the community because you got a background? Right, right. All that the stuff, loans. Those, those issues stop us right. from uh, continuing yeah. the education right. to be able to earn yourself out of the non skilled labor center. So that's one of the problems that we as the Fathers and Foundation have identified is that a lot of the issues with poverty is because the education level is just too low in that community. The formal education level, I'm mean, the same thing about intelligence. Right. The hood is full of intelligence. Absolutely. But the issue is that we don't have enough formal education. So you look at our plight, you look at our situation. The issue is that if you have 10 people, right, and none of them get uh, diplomas, and you have 10 people that do, they're going to have different lives in 10 years. Mm-hmm. So let's start getting those. If I can snap my finger and everybody had a diploma that should have one, how much more money they would make before they die? Yeah. No, it's a number. Right. It's a million dollars. Yeah. So that's why we want to get at least within the next five years a thousand people with their GEDs. Because that's a billion dollars. More in our community. See, it's, it's simple math. You don't have a diploma, you're probably, you're doomed according to uh, uh, Gary Becker. And all our programs are based on uh, economist Gary Becker, Nobel Peace Prize, from, uh, Peace Prize winner from, uh, from X Economics, um, from University of Chicago. Mm. So what he said basically, if you need to make investments in your workforce, mm-hmm. it's like you're working in any, your company. Right. You've got supplies, yeah. you've got to supply needs, you got to do all these things. So one of the, one of the issues that the Fathership Foundation takes on strong is that we're making the right investments in our community yeah. and the workforce for later. Mm-hmm. It's all about your workforce. Yeah. If you work, I mean that's how. That's, yeah, that's how. Let me give you an example. ABC Company comes to to Wilmington, Delaware. Mm-hmm. Right. We said we got five thousand jobs. Right. Right. Where's, we want we want to put a factory here. Mm-hmm. Right where the blight and where everybody's killing and shooting, right? Mm-hmm. The education level, the mean is something like little uh, folk grade, mm-hmm. right? And we're going to come to your community and we're going to give you 5,000 jobs, right? All you need is some college. Right. Doesn't help you. Some college. And we got tuition reimbursement. Right. We got. Man, you can progress everything right. to do nothing because no one has a freaking diploma. Nobody. And and where I'm at is it's it's sad because it's part of the culture. Mm-hmm. I had three, I had the grandma, mm-hmm. the mom, and the daughter, mm-hmm. and my GD. Wow. Wow. That's nuts. It gets serious. Yeah. I'm in a doctoral program. Three other black people in there, they're African. Hmm. We got to get our numbers up on every level, bachelors, masters, doctors. Right. Because when we're missing, it matters. Yeah. I did an internship with the chief judge at Family Court in Delaware. We in Delaware, Judge Coon. Wonderful lady. Right? Came to my hospital, kid from my couch, super lady. Hmm. Right? She said, it's not that anybody's pulling their thumbs trying to hold the black man down and all this. Some people don't like black people, they just don't. Right. But you're not at the table. Yeah. You're not, here to, you. you're not here to put your part in. You're not even in the building. In the building. You're, you're not even in the, in the building. Oh, dude, listen, I, I, went to, I got a master's in human services administration, uh-huh. right? There's an administration wing of family court. Right. To, to administer all those fines and all that paperwork. Mm. One black person on the third floor. Everybody else was like janitors or bailiffs hmm. or lawyers. Right. Yeah, yeah. But you don't see that our numbers aren't up because our education level is too low. Right, right. And you know who, who's winning? Other ethnic groups because they got the numbers up. Right. Be a, they, have a, they have less people in the United States than us, but they have more people in their group right. that have a form of education to earn a better living. I get it, yeah. What I'm trying to do with the Fathership Foundation is move people from the non-skilled labor sector to the skilled labor sector. Right. 
Because that's what you said. That's what the money is. You can't do that. That's for every, listen, that's dude, it. people that are educated have more of everything in any society. Absolutely. I 100% agree with that. Okay. And our economy is changing as well. Mm-hmm. So forget the digital divide where the law stands. Right? Mm-hmm. That's what they happen now. Is India, they're educating their people at a high rate. Mm-hmm. They're the biggest democracy. That's a billion people. Dude. <laughs> so we have to be more, we need more STEM programs, mm-hmm. right? Science, math, and stuff for Americans, period. Not just African Americans or urban Americans. We need more STEM and science and stuff. But we need people graduating. I mean, the whole, the whole, I mean, the whole pub, public school system in America, that's a whole other episode. But but no, you're right. Like like just these simple programs. I mean we say simple, but these um, basic educational programs, like you said the STEM program, all that stuff, like that carries so much weight when you when you when you go into these higher learning courses. Yeah. And just like that that lack of it, especially in the urban community. But exactly. we have to make what Gary Becker said, we have to make the investments in yeah. in human capital. Right. It's all about human capital. Nobody's making any investments in your your youth. Right. And then when they're nineteen, they have they're they're killing each other and so my point is if you want to do to affect the crime rate or the homicide rate in Wilmington, uh, Delaware, uh, in 2024, mm. well, you need to be dealing with the kindergarten and fifth graders right now. Yeah, it's generation. You because gotta... look, when the the police are called after somebody's killed, mm-hmm. you can't do nothing. They, okay, we, we're going to handle it. We're going to prosecute. But we didn't make. The, we didn't create this person. The dad not being there created this person. Mm-hmm. Poverty created that person. Mm-hmm. We're all a sum total of our experiences. Mm-hmm. So we have to start changing the experiences that people that kids are having. Right. That means putting dad back in the classroom. That means working with mom. That means, yo, dude. Like if you show me people, I'll be like, yo, dude, you don't know the nurse's name, the principal's name, yeah. the teacher's name. Yeah. They, what is, do they know your name? Right. Would you rather them say he's expelled, call legal? I should be a teacher, right? Mm-hmm. Or get his dad on the phone. Mm-hmm. Which one? Mm-hmm. That's what people need to understand and realize that this father thing is important. Mm-hmm. It can change our entire community. At any day, any point in any day, we have at least two million people locked up, a million people are coming home on probation every day. What they yeah. came home doing their thing? Mm-hmm. Where's the first place you should be stopping to get the hell out of jail? See your kid. Remember that. Mm-hmm. And I have two kids. So like my whole thing I went through with my father, I learned a lot. Remember how that some dudes don't get it like him. Mm-hmm. You know, like he it's unfortunate what happened here. We're very close now. He helped me do a lot because he just came home last. He just did six. We both got locked up at the same time. Wow. They tried to give him eight. He didn't take the deal. No, he tried to give him three. That was the deal. And then he ended up getting eight. Wow. But I ended up beating the case and coming home. You know what I mean? So, so I took care of him while he was there. So we've been through. I was doing mirroring him. Yeah. And we didn't even know each other. And I heard he was in Scranton because my dad was in the feds for a while. So I heard he was in Scranton when I went to college. He was, you know, he was I, I, he was near me. I didn't know. Right. But um, I told him, man, when I was little, my step pop used to abuse me. Mm-hmm. You know, before the molestation of my little sisters, and it was just sad, yo. I said, I'm from California. Mm-hmm. I just want him to come through. I, I think I'll, I'll hear stuff about my dad, and I'll be like, yo, man. That's when my dad, my dad had come with all the rolling thirties with the crips and just with big muscles and just say, Yeah. And it never happened. Right. I told him that story. He was like, oh man, your mom would told my told, told my mom she didn't want nothing. I'm like, yo, dude, that's nothing. You missed the whole point. That could keep me from my daughter's right, right, right. I go to court. Right. So but what I understood is that there are a lot of men that think like that. Mm. And you gotta bring him over to the other side. Right. Now he understands clearly. Do you do you, um so that is another like mm-hmm. big thing that that I've not necessarily experienced but I hear that some men just don't feel like dealing with the woman that they they, they had a child with or um, <clears throat> you know things go sour and you know sometimes you know there are Women that can make it difficult. I'm not saying that they're they're all can make it. They have the ability to make it difficult. Yeah. Right. Um, do you speak on that in your in, in your groups in regards to? Yeah, we what, what happens every month is we have a workshop, um, and a lot of times, whenever we do, we start talking about our life. 
you know, when I came to talk about what the freedom station is about, but there's so many issues that we talk about as we deal with fathership and dealing um, with uh, one, one issue that's in the research. Um, Fagan talks about it here from Temple and Scholars. Um, he um, talks about maternal gatekeeping. Mm. And um, I experienced that with my daughter's mom. I think that um, a lot of times um, it's, Explain it's, what maternal gatekeeping is. If you don't maternal know. gatekeeping is when I don't have the actual definition, but what I um, have come to understand it is is that when women are the uh, the custodial mm. parent, and they take authority, and it's like you have to go through them mm -hmm. the gate to get through the child, and they're going to ask you about everything. They're going to take a position of authority, and that can be because they have the custody. Yeah, so that could be an insult right. to the man, and it can also be a punishment mm -hmm. that she's using. Absolutely. Like, you better have him back at this time, or just the whole entire, that whole mm -hmm. dynamic is problematic. Yeah, absolutely. And then it, a lot of what issue really complicates that, and we talk about a lot of what guys talk about, is that the women are using child support as a weapon. Oh, yeah. So, it's like, I'm going to sue you for child support because it's not because... She, you're not taking care of the kid. It's because we, they don't want, the people are going to cause you some trouble. They're going to lock you up. Gonna... That is very true. And I, I, so let me say, I'm not a mother, so mm -hmm. I, I, I don't. I have never experienced this, but I know people who have. And I've talked to both sides. I've talked to the mothers. I've talked to the fathers. I've talked to a lot of fathers who um, believe that the system is completely just for the mother and they're completely against the father especially going to like family court and different things as far as like support and things of that nature True. so do you have something for for your fathers that come in who are in these types of situations mm -hmm. that help them know how to address the courts when they go into the to the courtroom um, how to, to defend themselves and how to show proof of taking care of the child or whatever the case might be. Because what I see is that a lot of men just walk in, right? Uninformed. Yeah. Uninformed. They don't know what it is. And I mean, I'm not trying to be smart, but you look stupid. Mm -hmm. And basically at the end of the day, they're like, you don't know what's going on anyway. So we're going to go ahead and just take get this money to her. Court dismiss. Court dismiss. Have a nice day. Um, and again, this is not to say to the ladies, you know, you shouldn't be informed of what happens in the courtroom as well. Mm -hmm. But you it's hear more often thing. that the man, the man is normally uh, they go against the man if they, you know, it benefits the woman. So, do you have something for men to be educated yeah, so, when they're going to the court? Yes. Yeah, so, what we do is um, we partner with a mediation group, um, and uh, this lady, um, Ajawabi, she's from Wilmington, Delaware. She deals with the child support um, component. And all the, the, she's a mediator before he even goes to right. And she right. performs and what to say and what to do. Right. And she kind of she goes around. Actually, she goes around does this thing called um, she's gonna kill me. It's called um, conversations in the barbershop or something like that. Mm -hmm. And she goes around and educates. So whenever I have an issue like that, um, and there's another guy too named Sharif. So those are the two guys my go-to people for that. And guys have issues with um, I delegate or I collaborate with other people. Okay. And please, um, I want to be very clear. I believe that there should be support if the mother is. I, I do believe that the mother is the the, the primary caregiver um, mm -hmm. of the child. That there should be some type of support in place to take care of the child. I don't think it should be. Uh, uh, Fathership found on uh, Twitter and uh -huh. uh, Facebook Fathership Foundation. Do you have a website? Yeah, FathershipFoundation.org. That's like we really care. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, so that would be like the main place to go. Yeah, to. go there. You want to see our programs? Go to the video gallery, photo gallery. Yeah, you yeah. want to donate? We yeah. definitely need donations. We want to be able to, at some point, be grant making. Yeah, so that was the reason for the name, the foundation. We're right. not grant making now. We're doing fee for service, but at some point, we'll be doing. It. Yeah, that that would be that would be huge. Mm -hmm. that. And lastly, um, you got a couple big names to do a song for Oh yeah you. man well everybody's been hitting me man I mean, I've been doing this for about three years but before in my whole life and my negative life <laughs> I'm slinging night mm. I was doing a DVD out of a DVD called Freestyle for Nash. You can still see some of that stuff on YouTube. <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure everybody has some on YouTube. Rocking, rock aware. <laughs> 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 Cutting your hands. 
But um, yeah, so I had a lot of some connects from back then, a uh-huh. lot of guys that I knew. Um, but uh, recently, a lot of the gentlemen that I'm, that you hear on the song, they're doing social work. Wow. This is the new way. Like, right. almost, like um, uh, Alex Gino's doing social work. Right. Yes. Yes, yeah. they all doing yeah. little things. Yeah. And I mean, uh, even uh, Dame and uh, uh, Banger Productions, they're all doing things. They, they, may not, they might not be as organized as you. You might not see a lot, mm. but um, actually, Oskino does a lot of stuff in Delaware. Mm. Like he comes to all kind of community events. So I reached out to him. Um, then we had what was called the uh, Fathership Foundation Challenge, mm. and we put like an old hip hop beat that you could kind of like spit to, mm. like, like a boom bat. <laughs> yeah, like with put a bass line, uh-huh. you know, the old now Fuji rap stuff. Right. So, and those songs, you know, me being old, right, forty six official dinosaur. <laughs> I was around when. There, I'm gonna hear what he said. Now it's kind of like whatever you feel. Oh, you're talking to the same generation. Oh, we, we like we like lyrics. Okay, okay. Yeah, so like I learned something that you could spit to. I got a lot of trash. Yeah, a whole a lot of trash. Man, we got some good stuff. Um, so it's gonna be, you know, I know them guys. They gonna they gonna go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, right. they yeah. go man. But I was really impressed with Dane okay. and uh, Reese. Okay. And I was so impressed with Reese that he had to open this thing up. Wow. wow. Within twelve seconds, he said, "I'm gonna get the school to carry your book back." <laughs> that's like that's fathership. Like he yeah. is, he's on his way. Like we we trying to push this thing. We think we can change our community, man. Yeah. And dudes are already doing it. So we wanna. You know, illuminate each other. Yeah. Each other like that. I like he says a new way. I like that. Mm-hmm. Well, we want to thank you again for coming because. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, of course, because we need this <clears throat> in our communities because we are so um, bombarded with all the negative mm-hmm. that has gone on with the uh, in mm-hmm. our communities. We don't ever get to hear the positive. So we mm-hmm. definitely like to use the Laundry Live Show and Water Ice Radio to give people the platform to bring those positive mm-hmm. vibes and their foundations and different things here to talk about that. And also, to encourage people to, instead of following all the negative on social media, right. there's a lot of positive that exactly. you can follow. Dude, and start an agency. Yeah. Start on other, listen, you got, you got, um, you had So So Death, you had Rockefeller, you had Bad Boy, Death, Bad Boy, Death Bro. You can't just have a fellowship fighters. You need all kind of other stuff. Yeah. I want to be the, I want to, yo, start stuff. Let me partner with you. Right. Let's go change this community. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. Like, I don't want to be the only one. Yeah. You know That's I mean? wonderful because we always talk about that, like how we, we have to build off of each other. Mm-hmm. We can't just be like, oh, we, we're not messing with you. Yeah, right. exactly. So we appreciate you mm-hmm. um, being, being able to do something like this because there are um, these communities that need you. Um, definitely the emphasis on fathers being in their children's lives. And formal education. And formal mm-hmm. form mm-hmm. education as well. Um, so we salute you. We uh, wish you the best of luck. And you are... First time you're your guest, the second time you are family. So when you guys are having anything big going on, please let the um, Warren Live Show know. Um, is there anything coming up? I mean, um, yeah, yeah. Man, we, uh, man, we got a lot of stuff yeah, coming up. We um, we're sponsoring, uh, invited for Battle Rap. We partnered with the UW Battle League with Arsenal okay. the Rebel. He's going to be retiring. Oh, wow. Um, and August 5th, we're sponsoring that event um, in New York. We did uh, North New Jersey. Also, well, we're a sponsor on that ticket. Um, also, we have um, academic, academic fathership workshop on the seventeenth tomorrow that I gotta go home and keep some powerpoints for. It. Okay. And then uh, on June seventh, once you guys to come out to the culminating event for okay. the whole year, I'll give out the awards to the guys, most involved father, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's gonna be June seventh at Albert Palmer Elementary School. And um, what else do we have? Oh, comedy show on the eighteenth at Bossy. Um, like we moving, man. Guys are cooking. Yeah, yeah. Moving, man. <laughs> we I love like it. it. We love it. We love it. We love the grind. All right, Mr. Wilson, thank you for stopping by. Make sure you guys no are following the Fathership Foundation um, on Instagram, also also Fathership Found on Twitter, mm-hmm. and definitely check out the website. It's beautifully done at FathershipFoundation.org. Everyone. So you guys, there you have it. That is the Learn Me Live Show for um, May sixteenth, two thousand seventeen. Uh, really quick before we go. Yep. Tomorrow night, guys, 7 o'clock on your local um, Comcast and on your file. Oh, your world premiere. <laughs> yeah, um, my interview with our girl uh, TV with Celeste uh, for the uh, Women's Month celebration mm-hmm. comes on. And your girl, Larry, is going to be on there for her interview talking about the show, talking about where I have radio. Oh, my God. What's that, girl? I know it's Wednesday, but I'm like, 
My cousin was like, girl, uh, well, Empire, come on. I was like, for real? I'm like, uh, Drake. Well, <laughs> recording. Yeah, yeah. But no, I'm really excited. Oh, you can support Empire, you can't support your girl. Right? See, we need to open up our community. <laughs> <laughs> but they come on tomorrow night. Check for your local uh, Comcast, local channel, Empire, local channel. I would come on at 7. But a lot of other good interviews are on there as well. Shout out to my cousin, Devin Milano. She's on that too? Oh, uh, that's what. That's what. As well. And a lot of other uh, good women are on there, you guys, so please check that out. I'm still waiting for my, 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 my requests. Like, we told you to come. No, 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 I'm on my own. Like, I'm out here making See how don't be talking to me, D, but he be acting straight. I am making moves, though. All crazy. crazy. <laughs> but other than that, you guys, make sure you are following um, waterice.com. Yes. I'm going to uh, sign up for our newsletter so you can get everything that's going on in Philly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, make sure you are also following Water Ice on Instagram, on Twitter, and also on uh, Facebook as well. Snapchat. Shout out to everyone on the Water Ice Facebook Live page right now. Yeah. Um, and also make sure you guys are following the Lauren Marie Live, L-A-U-R-E-N-R-E-I-L-I-V-E on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, and don't forget to go to our official SoundCloud page where you will hear this show uploaded this week where you can go back and listen to. Mm-hmm. And also uh, another hundred other episodes, right? Mm-hmm. We're probably close to 200 now. We may be. <laughs> I don't want to put that number out there. <laughs> and then somebody like, no, you only had 150. That's still, I mean, that's halfway there. That's so halfway there. They could just stop me. We are getting there, you guys. We are moving, we are cooking. Please know that we got a lot of good stuff coming up. It's really, brutal. really, really, really it's soon. All and if you see us this weekend at the beer and uh, wine festival, yeah. say what's up. And the taco, and I'll probably be eating at the taco and yeah. um, burger. Take taco, down. But I'll still say what's up. <laughs> With a hamburger all in the uh, face. <laughs> All right, guys, that is it for us. So make yeah, sure you cool. guys are back next Tuesday, 8 o'clock, mm-hmm. Eastern Standard Time, right here. Got another on, guest. I have another guest. Um, and it's a really good guest for the ladies, for everybody. She is an entrepreneur. It's going to be a really, really, really fun show. I've been waiting to meet this lady <laughs> right now. So I'm really excited. I, I'm actually not even ready for this. I know you're going to hang up on me because that's, that's Finally! Just... <laughs> that's what, that's I what get my does. turn. I get my turn. I'm so excited. That's what she does. Normally it's only me and a bunch of guys on the room and I get beat up on all the time. But now. Yeah, she's definitely going to get come at me. It's coming. Yeah. Whatever, Bri, I'm ready. Whatever. I got stuff on her too. We get out of here, everybody. Make sure you come back next Tuesday, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, right here on Facebook Live, on Lauren Reed Live, and Water Ice Live. Don't forget um, to follow us on all those pages and come back for more next week. And remember, guys, not all superheroes wear cake. Sometimes they wear headphones. Good night, everybody.